everyone. I hope we're all doing really well and ready to learn some more National 5 Chemistry. Today we're going to have a look at alcohols and there's three things that we want to go over in today's videos. They will be making alcohols, the functional group of an alcohol and then we'll look at drawing and naming alcohols as well. So making alcohols then, there's two main methods for making alcohol. The first method is the fermentation of sugars and more specifically the sugar molecule is called glucose and they use a biological catalyst called an enzyme which is yeast to turn the glucose into the alcohol ethanol and some carbon dioxide gas is also produced in this chemical reaction as well. Now this would be if you were making um, drinking alcohol so this would be the process that we'd use um, to produce that kind of alcohol. And the second um, method to make alcohol would be an addition reaction. And specifically an addition reaction um, using water. So addition reaction with H2O or water. And that is called a hydration reaction. Now you might remember us talking about hydration reactions when we looked at addition reactions. Um, in a previous video. So a hydration reaction in chemistry is when we're adding water, a H2O molecule, to a carbon to carbon double bond. So that's the second way that you can make alcohol. So let's look at this second um, method of producing alcohol in a little bit more detail. So we've got a alkene here with a carbon to carbon double bond. This is ethene. And if we undergo an addition reaction with water or a hydration reaction, as we'll refer to it from now on, then all we're doing is we're breaking the carbon to carbon double bond and we're adding in water. Now I can write the water in the H2O like this and that'll be a little bit easier for when we're coming to see how it adds on to this molecule and produces our alcohol. So it's, there's our H2O. And on this side, we are having our carbon to carbon double bond breaking. So we've still got those four hydrogens that we had on before. And what we're doing is we're kind of adding the water in in two parts. We'll put in a hydrogen on one of our carbons here. And there it's there. And we'll also put in this OH group onto the other side of the molecule, across the other side of the carbon to carbon double bond. And here it is here. Now it's this OH group that is the alcohol group if you will and we'll talk about that in a lot more detail in just a second but this is the functional group of the molecule this is what makes this molecule an alcohol is the fact that it's got the OH group just in the same way that before that the fact that this ethene has a carbon to carbon double bond that's why it's ethene and an alkane well this has an OH group which is called a hydroxyl group and that means that this molecule is an alcohol and so the name of this molecule would be eth an all. So that leads us on very nicely to quite an important point here. I've just talked about it but it's worth highlighting just further is that this OH group here, this functional group, this is an important part of the molecule, it's the functional group, it's the reactive part. We need to know that this OH group is called the hydroxyl group. We need to know that name, hydroxyl group. Now, you can be asked quite a lot in your National 5 um, chemistry careers to spot this, to draw it, and a lot of people sometimes call it the alcohol group or the OH group. That's not correct. You have to use the correct terminology. This is a hydroxyl group. Let me write that out a little bit clearer so we can see the correct spelling there as well. Hydroxyl group. This is exactly what makes the molecule an alcohol. Now you see it written um, a couple of different ways. Sometimes that bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen isn't present. So sometimes you'll see it written kind of sandwiched together like this. And just to know that there is a bond in there, but it's just a kind of a shortened um, version of it. Um, either or is, is correct to draw. Um, but you'll probably see this one a little bit more common. 
So why is that important, that functional group, that hydroxyl group? Well, it allows us to draw and to name and to identify alcohols, much in the same way that we've been doing for a long time now with all the other homologous series. If I wanted to name this alcohol, I go through my normal rules. I find the longest chain that contains a functional group. So there's one, two, three carbons. It contains a functional group. So this must be prop. And then I'm thinking about the ending. Well, I've noticed that it's got this group here. So it's not the OH group. It's not the alcohol group. It is the hydroxyl group. Make sure we're using the correct name. And since we've got the hydroxyl group on this molecule, it must be an alcohol. And its name is going to end in an all. So this is propanol. The alcohol, three carbons, and the hydroxyl group, propanol. Now, strictly speaking, the last example that we looked at there, the correct name would be propan one all, And that's something we're going to have a look at now. We're just adding another little element to the naming of alcohols that you'll be very comfortable with because we've looked at it when we were naming branches on molecules. We have to put um, a number for the position of the hydroxyl group. So yes, the alcohols names the end in anol, but we also have to put a number in for the position of the hydroxyl group. So this anol is normally, 9 times out of 10, is going to be written something like this. And with a number, could be 1, 2, 3, etc. All. So this is the kind of the more normal way to write out the alcohol name. And you'll see what I mean if we look at these two examples. Normal rules, find the longest chain carbons that contain a functional group. One, two, three, four carbons. This must be but. We've got this hydroxyl group on the first carbon. So this is going to be but and, and here's where we leave a kind of wee space, a dash one because it's on the first carbon here. So but and one all. So this is the name of this molecule here. If I looked over to the right hand side now, again we've got four carbons and a hydroxyl group. We know it's a, an alcohol. We know it's going to be but. But this is but and this time two all because it's on the second carbon. So it's important that we don't just write down but and all because there's different types of butanol. We can have the OH group on the first carbon or on the second carbon. So there's two different types. And let's just look at one final example here where just like when we looked at our alkenes, we had a carbon to carbon double bond. That double bond was the most important thing in the molecule. So that dictated how we'd number the molecule. It's the same thing with the hydroxyl group. That's more important than the branch, so this is what we'll use to number the chain of carbons. So since the hydroxyl group is closest to the left-hand side, then that is going to be the start of the chain. So there's carbon 1, here's carbon 2, 3, 4, and 5. I would not number this chain from right to left using the, um, the, methyl, the methyl branch. Can't, can't do that. Use the hydrox group. That's much more important. So we've got five carbons in a line. We've got a pent. And we have got a hydroxyl group. This is an alcohol. So it's pent and dash two. Because the hydroxyl group is on the second carbon. Dash all. And the last thing to do is to put in our methyl group. Which is on the fourth carbon. So four dash methyl pent and two all and see how we're just bringing all these skills together that we've learned through the last couple of weeks and last couple of videos so just bring it all together now and we can still use all the same naming rules we're just adding little tweaks here and there for different functional groups and for different families okay guys that's alcohols um, and i hope you found the video interesting and useful